what you're talking about. I think uh, we'll get delayed for the meeting. It's we'll talk sure. That's that's okay. I'll I'll ask you separately. Yeah. Yep. So I'll I'll share my screen now. So um, I think the first thing we can discuss is uh, related to Git tool chooser, or uh, yeah, we should discuss the progress with what uh, with the Git tool chooser. So. So we had uh, an interesting conversation in the last meeting about uh, about uh, features that we provide to users which are not supported by JGit. How to um, use, how to get that information from JGit, and how to um, how to get that information to Git tool chooser so that it can recommend the right uh, implementation. So, uh, so I'll, I'll just explain the problem. Uh, the problem here so that everyone's on the same page. So currently the user while choosing an additional behavior would not know uh, if that feature is supported by JGit or not. So if the way it is designed is that after, for an example, if a user chooses uh, git LFS pull, uh, after, that, uh, after that operation is run, the user will know that that operation is not supported through an exception and that is thrown um, by JGit. So now the, the, the challenge here is that we need to use this information. We need to get this information for the Git tool chooser. Now the biggest problem here is that Git tool chooser is working before creating, before the creation of the client and JGit or CLI Git would be called when the client is created and we are using the operations. That is how um, it works. So, so, uh, so if we need that information, for example, if we need to know, can we? Uh, is the user um, is Git LFS uh, pull um, supported or not? Now, if we need to know that before the creation of client. Uh, we had two options. I, I thought about, uh, so I had a discussion with uh, Fran as well in the Gitter chat. So, uh, so what I was saying there was that the problem is that JGit, uh, the way, so, it, so the, the checkout or any operation which is implemented by JGit is implemented through certain commands like checkout command or um, these are interfaces which provide the capabilities of different features provided in a checkout. Uh, so, so when it implements it, it does not create any kind of uh, a method to access the variables, the field values like LFS pull or so I need the field values to know what the user has chosen. And then I can, if they are not null, I can say, okay, JGit doesn't support that. And we can throw an exception or do whatever we want to. Um, we haven't hard coded anywhere that, okay, if we see get LFS pull somewhere, we say false or we say true it's always uh, the way it is checked is that we we look for a non null value if we see a non null value we throw an exception so there was no way for us to get that information out of jgit with the current implementation and so one of the ways i could do that was to change the uh, the way checkout command is being implemented or clone command is being implemented within jgit api uh, implementation but that seemed like um, so for me, what was easier and cleaner was to create a separate command, which would not be dependent on any implementation because it, because if the command depends on the implementation, which is JGit or Git, I would first have to create a client and then I can get that information. But I need the information before the creation of the client to do. So what I did was that I created a new command, uh, which is not an interface usually the all of the commands for the clone commands or the checkout or the push commands they are uh, implementations of a general interface called the git command my command is not being implemented by any um, uh, interface it's uh, is not in, it's not coming from any interface it's it's a separate class uh, which so what it does is it it contains all the features i've i've aggregated all the i've collected all the features which are not supported by jgit we can instantiate it before calling any client and then we can use the decoration uh, we usually do of commands from extensions. So for any command, if we want to add the information which a user has provided 
do the command we use decoration tools i've used something similar to decorate or let's say determine what are the options user has chosen and and then the unsupported command contains all of that information and it can determine if jget is to be used or not it just provides a boolean that if jget can be used or it cannot be used and then that boolean can be taken by uh, the git tool chooser to modify its recommendation in fact uh, not modify its recommendation i have i have changed the constructor now earlier the constructor only needed uh, a, a git scm source object or uh, a repo url to instantiate now it would need a boolean flag as well which would tell it which would be the uh, which would be the information that if can we use jget or not so if if there are certain features within the plugin which are not supported by jget and they are being used by the user we would not recommend jget even if it's uh, optimal according to the repository side so i I've, i've raised uh, two prs for that one in git plugin and one in git client plugin mark i think you've seen the git client plugin you thank you for creating those tests um and uh, for the git plugin one i think uh, uh, i haven't created the tests but i have uh, created a place where i think i can show that part of code where we are uh, um where we are uh, using git tool chooser and how we are going to just the flow of how we we are determining um every how are we taking the decisions just a second ऑपरेशन वी so so what i'm doing here is here is the unsupported command which is being instantiated before any creation of client i am using a new decoration method it is it is only implemented by those extensions which which wish to convey the information that hey i am not being used by uh, i cannot support jget and uh, so i am implementing this method so so these extensions what they would do is they would add that information to this instance this object instantiated uh, unsupported command and once we have that uh, what is going to happen is i create the estimator here i am getting the url uh, and then here when i am calling the git instantiating the git tool chooser it is going to take the url and also it is going to take a decision taken by the unsupported command which is to determine the support for jget how it Uh, uh takes this decision is basically we uh we have a flag if we see that we have a non null value for any of the feature which is not supported by jget we would just say uh, cannot use uh, we would return a false for jget and the git tool then can make a decision can make the right decision of not recommending jget if uh, if any feature is not supported by uh, jget and this way we would not break any existing use cases so if a user is expecting that for, for example if a user has chosen git lfs pull and if we were not implementing any kind of functionality like this and let's say the repository size is uh, a small repository uh, what would happen is that for him earlier git lfs pull was working but now it would not because we have chosen jget for him but since uh, now we are taking the decision additional decision of checking if uh, the feature is compatible or not we would not break uh, uh, as far as i've thought about it we would not break any existing use cases uh, with the in introduction of this uh, uh, decision so and then ultimately when we have uh, the estimate the get tool chooser we would just get the get tool and uh, then we can feed it to the um, to the get uh, this is this is the method which creates the get client and then we get the client so 
this is how i am uh, i believe this is how we would um, we would use git tool chooser anywhere within the git plugin these would be uh, these steps would be would have to be taken to ensure that we do not uh, break any existing use case and side by side provide the optimal implementation we wish to so um we have the prs for it the code is written i i of course i need to add the tests i don't have the tests now i we we would have uh, say, i i've seen that we have at least 10 features which are not supported by jgit so i guess i would need a lot of uh, use uh, test cases to cover all of these cases and how in those scenarios we are not recommending what we should not uh, so um, that's a task for me apart from that uh, i the second thing which which is important for the git tool chooser is the extensions the uh, extensions uh which will implement the extension point we have provided which would give us the information of the repository size through rest apis so with the github uh so currently how i implement before the demo i implemented an extension in the github branch source plugin so the way i implemented it was that i um, i sent the github repository url to the plugin and then i uh, asked the plugin to give me the size of the repository and um, so i did not involve any credentials user credentials uh, throughout this process so this request rest re uh, api request was going unauthenticated as an un unauthenticated user so this was this would currently work only for a public repository not for a private private repository that is the first uh, i would say um, uh, a feature which is missing that we we are not supporting private repository estimation the second thing is that i, I was uh, talking to um, liam liam is the repository owner of uh, uh, github branch source plugin so he was saying that providing the github url is not enough because uh, there are um, uh, enterprise servers which would have entirely different custom customized names which would not even contain github in their so so we need to think about a different way to provide them uh, a unique um, i would say maybe combination of the repository url and user id or user name wait 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 a second okay i'm not understanding that one at, at all because if i'm corporate if i'm running github enterprise it's got a url somewhere and the repository url absolutely encodes the full information it could be uh my my server dot example dot com slash marky weight slash some secret repository dot git but but that url absolutely does identify that repository can you help me understand more what liam was trying to tell us because the https url to a repository is absolutely unambiguous that that is a repository it may be inside a corporation it may not have the word github anywhere but it is absolutely unambiguous so uh, so so what so i implement how i implemented that validation that okay is this a github url or not i just i i just put a check that if the string contains the word github ah, into it ah, okay is, great great so liam's yeah. right then yeah because yeah. the github enterprise installation at ca technologies where i worked i don't think it had the name github anywhere in it so yeah okay got yes. it so that is what he was saying that we i need to change the way i'm validating yeah that uh, that's okay that's fine that. it's not that it's not that he was saying there's more information needed it's just that that the url may in fact not have the word github anywhere in it so what should we should we validate the url if we have the url so in that logic of validating it uh, so, uh, should i send a request to it and then check if it's uh, if i it's just the, pass it uh, i pass it to the to let the branch source decide i wouldn't put any extra validation on it personally i would just let the branch source decide what it does with it but you would uh, know if it's the github branch source plugin or like the github branch source plugin itself would know that it's a github should. branch source right so should I or is at, at least point, responsible to decide yeah cuz the other tricky bit here is that you need an api token instead of like an ssh credential and some people will try and favor ssh credentials you may not have I'm trying to remember if you can configure that without an api token 
I don't think you can actually. Yeah. Anyways, need to look yeah. into that. Yeah. And and those branch source plugins know all about those complexities, right? And they worry about those complexities. Oh, I need to make an arrest request, but all I have is an SSH token. How do I do that? And the answer is you don't. You have to get a, another token. So, yeah. Go ahead, okay. Rishab. Sorry. So forgive the forgive the side trip. I was just concerned that there was something I hadn't understood. Thank you. I. Uh... I think uh, so I would need to um, because I would need to implement the extensions in any of the branch source plugins. So I think I would look more into how I can do it, look more into the code and implement them. Uh, okay, so so currently what I was thinking was to uh, first implement for consolidate the implementation with GitHub and merge it if, if it's available with them, then with GitLab then we, we can maybe proceed to other plugins as well now uh, i had one question with the uh, with the with the tool chooser which uh, uh, mark you commented about it uh, about a uh, thing that we can have the cache if the uh, if we have a multi branch project and it it has a cache git repository directory uh, a pipeline pro a, a project which is implement a, a separate project which is implementing um, uh, a, a checkout step can also access that cache repository. Okay, and uh, how would that happen? I, I, it, I'm it not... just the the master, the Jenkins, the Jenkins master, the Jenkins, probably eventually called controller, the Jenkins controller, um, hmm. has a caches directory, and it doesn't care what context you're asking for asking for information about that cache directory. So if the URL, the repository URL is known to the Jenkins cache, it can be, it, its size can be answered. Whether or not the job asking the question is multi-branch or freestyle or, okay. or multi-config or simple pipeline. Okay. Um, so as far as I know, we need uh, this functionality of uh, locking a cache and then examining it is provided within the uh, SCM source uh, class. It's not provided within the Git SCM class. Uh, so, right, yeah, but I so think the I, the, I think the cache implementation is actually in the Git plugin. If you if you look at okay, okay, I'll uh, I haven't uh, I, I think I haven't looked at. Uh, that in detail, I would look more about that. Well, I, I think you're actually already using it. This we'd, we'd had a conversation in one of your pull requests about making sure that we did not bother to acquire a lock on that cache because all we're doing is asking about the size of the thing. And you had you had implemented in your pull request that it was opening the cache but not require not acquiring a lock on it. But but I'm using it when I have a Git SEM source object. Okay. I'm not, uh, that's how I'm using it. I, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not following that. That still seems like a perfectly safe thing to do. What did I miss? Help me understand. So what, what I'm saying is that if I am, <clears throat> if I'm trying to instantiate Git to chooser within the Git SEM class, would I have the Git SEM source object there available? And no, because that's a different, uh, project right as far as i understand git SEM source is a class which is used when we are trying to scan multiple branches and it's a separate multi-branch project and okay. when i'm trying to use uh, let's say a separate pipeline project where i'm just checking out the branch a single branch i am using the git SEM class and uh, what i'm trying to say is that would i have the access to that uh, object how would i access the cache then I, I think just by asking for asking to to see if there is a cache, if a cache exists for this URL, for this repository URL, and if it does, read it. Okay, so uh, I let me just open the get to chooser for uh, what I want to say. I'll communicate better with it.
how if I want to access the Okay, so uh, Mark, if you can see here, when I, uh, so I have a function which is, which uses the cache and determines if the size of the repository using the cache. So I expect a key SEM source object and I use that object to get the cache entry and then I use a static method provided by abstract gate SEM source to get the cache directory. So what you're saying is that I can, I, oh, I can use this to, um, I can use this in git SEM uh, class to get the cache uh, directory. I think so. Isn't isn't the key there, the cache entry key, actually the repository URL? Uh, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not so sure my my hope was URL. my hope was that 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 cache entry value is the repository URL. If I'm wrong on that, then we've got to go look what the what the index is into the cache. But I would be I was expecting it was either the repository URL or some variant of the repository URL. Okay. And as such, you can just ask the thing through that static method, get cached or do you have this? If you okay, don't, yeah. I can't estimate with it. If you do, I'll estimate with it. I, I understand your point now. Oh, I was not aware that the cache entry is actually the repository URL. Okay. I just implemented it. The same. Okay, I'll 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 uh, I'll first see what the cache entry is, and then if it's the repository URL, then we don't need a source object to uh, to get the cache. So right. we can implement it. Okay. Uh, so I think this is it for the Git tool chooser. Um, the things we have to do. So now uh, the question is that what so planning for phase three what uh, what should we do apart from get to chooser and uh, the release we have to do for uh, the fix we did, the redundant fetch? Well, the first thing I thought was to implement git clone maybe, but then uh, the reason to implement it, one of the reasons to implement it would be that it's it has a better performance than git fetch. And uh, I've shared a document in the Gitter channel where I've compared, I've, I wrote a lot of benchmarks. I wrote three benchmarks, different different benchmarks for um, to compare their performances. I only have uh, uh, the result for one here, but for all of the three benchmarks. So for the first benchmark, we will see um, this is a test for a single repository, uh, which is around 300 MB, and what we see here across different platforms is almost similar. Uh, performance. There's a second difference, but there's an error rate of one second as well. So not be too sure even if this is a one second difference here. Uh, then I ran another benchmark with my, uh, where I varied the size of the repositories to see with different sizes, how would git clone versus git fetch work. And I did not see any difference in that case. I also create, uh, I experimented with running the same benchmark with uh, on uh, CentOS 7 with git 1.8 uh, but at there as well i could not see uh, any performance difference noticeable performance difference it was around uh, half a second the difference between git clone and git fetch now this can mean two things the first that uh, that there's no difference the second that my benchmarks might be wrong and why i would say so is that uh, the reason why i'm how i'm implementing git clone so i'm using the launcher which is provided uh, which is the implementation for um, CLI Git uh, to perform a to launch a Git operation. So I'm using it to uh, call Git clone. I hope that I'm that's that's that's, a, that's the way to do it. Okay. So if that's the way to do it, then I'm then the results say that there's not much of a difference. So then, would we want to implement Git clone? Is there a use? Is there a benefit uh, to implement that feature that operation? instead of git init plus git fetch so that's for the for me there is for me there is not given that give i would much rather invest your time providing git tool providing the the branch source implementations to giddy to github to gitlab to bitbucket to to tulip to to the, to the other branch source providers I think it's much more valuable than spending time on this, on adding Git clone as an alternate implementation of 
a subset of the capabilities that the plugin already offers. The, the Git clone can't do all the things that init plus fetch can do. And, and therefore, when we imp if we were to implement clone, it would be purely a subset and a subset okay. that the user then has to be very intelligent and decide, do I want to use init plus fetch or do I use clone? And if I use clone, do I get the benefit? You know, it, it's an awful lot of analysis that I don't think we really want the users to think about. Okay, I understood. Uh, okay. I, I'm open to others disputing. That's that I don't. I'm I'm certainly not the sole mentor here, but I my sense was this is not enough of a difference to justify your investment in it. Okay, so um, the other mentors have anything to say? I definitely agree with Mark. Like it's for user, it will be too difficult to make that analysis and go with any particular decision on that. Okay. okay. I mean, I, I would I would beg you to include this in a in the summary report because I will refer to it frequently when people complain to me that they want clone implemented. It's like, no, I'm sorry, we really did a a, a rigorous benchmark, and the benchmark says this. It's not just me saying it. The benchmark says this. There is not enough difference to justify our energy to to write a whole new implementation. Okay, okay, Mark. I'll I'll, I'll even add the other expert benchmarks I did. I'll add all of those results to uh, have a more comprehensive report here. Then I yeah, I'll add that. So uh, so if you're not doing that, so what my question is that uh, do we want to um, implement and consolidate what we have here and then uh, that is what we deliver for this project or do we want to look for something else as well so uh, for this phase would we so would we want to do we want to explore another area of performance improvement uh, i frankly uh, i'm not sure where i could look for that uh, as much as i've seen the git plugin and the benchmarks i've done i don't know where i can find where is where is it is there any area where I could find a sizable difference between performance or something where we could work uh, to improve it? One thing I had in my mind was uh, was uh, was this PR I've seen, which uh, I'm not sure if we would want to look into it. Where did it? I lost it. I think. I think the number is five hundred. You can jump 502. I think I've written it in. Okay. Yes. Is, so uh, this is something uh, the mentors can decide if if we would want to work for this idea using the Git SEM file system caches as a reference protocol Git and clone. You are you are a brave brave man. That is very impressive. This was an entire GSOC gsoc project proposal to consider taking this thing on so so, that's, so yes anything you can do to help this move forward would be great but for me there's much more value in first assuring that we get the branch source plugins all the way to done so that they're contributing an answer to the to the question to the, the okay. tool chooser question right for me those that... and, and i i expect that's already going to be challenging for you because the giddy the Giddy plugin, the Bitbucket plugin, the GitLab plugin, the GitHub branch source plugin, each of those will have its own different and unique things that you're going to discover. Okay. And, and I don't even know what the Tulip or Tulip plugin does, but it is also a branch source. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, so then what we can, um, so the deliverable, is for us then uh, the git tool chooser with the extension with the support we are promising with the plugins we have i think that should be the first priority for us because we want to uh, when we release that feature it should actually work as we have promised it to um, then if so if we are able to do that within a certain um, time period and we still have uh, some number of days where we could um, work on something else would we think about this or should we focus on first focus on prioritizing the release of git tool chooser and um, and the feature the extensions the support and everything 
Okay, so so my preference, uh, I, maybe I should be quiet. Fran, you want to give your preference first? I, others, others are welcome to chime in here. That's, I, I tend to be opinionated and loud, and I, I don't want to overwhelm others with my opinionated loudness. No, but I think I think that you're right. Um, um, for it, <laughs> reopening this uh, Pandora's box. I would just try to. <laughs> yes, I, I would try. I would try to uh, uh, to finish all the all the effort with the uh, with the brand source spark. Yes, I totally agree with with Mark. Yeah, I think I, I think that's gonna make sure that you kind of can keep focused and finish that off, and then you know if there is extra time, then maybe we talk about like what else. Okay. But, Okay, uh, I understand, and I'll. Uh, okay, that's how we'll uh, move forward. So uh, I think we have finished the time. I just have one question, and that's question. That that question is uh, related to JGit. I, so Mark and I wanted to ask, when does a user use, do people even use JGit? My so the reason I'm asking the motivation behind is that we are providing a feature which uh, this Git tool chooser which would. Uh, would work well if a user is using JGit for a large size repository. Then is the uh, that is the scenario where uh, any user would see a noticeable difference in performance after implementing this after adding this feature to the plugin. Uh, so, do we even have those cases where people are using JGit for? Let's not just say the size of the repository. Maybe that might not be something we can know. But why do people use JGit? One 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 way I know is one reason is that for uh, places where Git is not installed, JGit can be used. But then I don't understand why can we not why can we not have Git in any kind in a, in any environment or why would we use JGit? So so uh, I'll give you a very specific example. CI.jenkins.io builds the Jenkins website as one of its tasks. It has infra slash Jenkins.io, and in that thing's output, it's cloning a 60 megabyte repository using JGit. Mm -hmm. And that 60 megabyte repository keeps growing. By now, it may actually be more like 70 or 80 megabytes because people keep adding pictures to it. Yes. And, and, and so as, as we may reach the break point, the point, the tipping point where command line Git would be much better for that repository than JGit. Uh, we may have already reached that point. Uh, the reason that the original implementer of that thing did not install um, command line Git is he, I think, was fundamentally lazy and didn't want to, right? He thought, I don't, don't want one more tool on things. Let's not install command line Git. And the choice to not install command line Git turned out that it broke all sorts of other testing because there are many different components which assume command line Git is available. And therefore, we have command line Git. We also are still using JGit. So, so, so I have an example. Now, we, could, we can call it contrived because I don't, we don't have hard data for how many installations have enabled JGit. At least I don't, I'm not aware of a way to get that kind of hard data. But, okay. but it, it's a valid point that if they don't have JGit enabled, we probably can't refer, can't suggest JGit to them. Or if they don't have CLI Git installed, we can't choose CLI Git. Yes, I was I was just wondering uh, how it would affect how this uh, feature would affect uh, the users when they're releasing this, and and how much uh, of, of a practical usage this feature would have. Okay, I, I I think I that's okay. So um, okay, so I I am going to work on um, the test. The first would be now since I think the PR for the Git tool chooser is complete now, in terms of the features it wants to uh, provide and the decision it needs to take, that is complete now. It was missing the uh, JGit compatibility uh, uh, issue, and now that is also I I've, I've raised a PR for that. So now I can move on to uh, consolidating the support for extensions. I have already raised a, a request for GitHub branch source. I would uh, first I would try to 
uh, uh, merge, get that merged, and then I would, or I would parallelly work on GitLab and uh, take another plugin as well. So I'll try to. Um, so that is my first task, and the second would be to add test cases to more test cases to uh, test pull request, and uh, the second one I've raised, the unsupport command feature. So. Okay, and so so is your sense that unsupported command has shown well enough for you? It's working the way you expected. We could safely merge it to get client plugin, so that you could have a a, a a readily usable build that has get client plug get has has the capability in it. So mm, mm, I think locally it doesn't doesn't matter to me because I would have uh, the snapshot uh, jar in my M two. So so I would say for the un unsupport command, unsupported command, I I think it doesn't it doesn't have anything which would require intensive interactive testing in the Git client plugin. But again, it's it's uh, it's a new command. Is it should it be a command? Should it be something else? Should it be shifted to the Git plugin? Not be kept within the Git client plugin. My point is that. If you people could review it and and uh, so I'm sh I'm what I'm confident about is that the feature is providing what I need. It's providing the information I need. But um, other than that, is it consistent with how we develop other classes in Git plugin? And should this be this be the way it should be developed? Or uh, so I just want um, the mentors to review it uh, that request and. Um, I, for my personal development, I would have the snapshot. Uh, I actually okay, also so try. Yes, yes, ma'am. You you answered it perfectly. It's not blocking you to not, not have this PR you. merged. That's yes. that is great. Okay, so that that yes. gives us the flexibility to review it, to think deeply about it, to compare it in context. Perfect. That's all I needed. Okay. Yes. So I can. Uh, I would have. Uh, a snapshot jar for the Git client, and then even if I uh, have I implement the extensions on the brand source plugins, I would have their uh, snapshot uh, jar in my M2. So I don't think I would be blocked by uh, any pull request um, status. Great. So, uh, yes. So I think I think that is it then for this meeting. Anything else anyone wants to discuss? Are, are you okay with the things that have have come come out in this meeting? I I know saying that we're not doing Git clone probably is a hard one because hey that was that's a major chunk of implementation. Are you okay with with that approach? Yes, ma. I think for me as well. It, for me, the the only reason to uh, uh, to recommend new features is it's that I need I get to code more and I get to learn more. But then what I have what I think I should remember is that we have to think about usability. Uh, that's the most important thing. If 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 I I just think about writing more code and not think about if, if that thing is even e will be used by the users or will be used in any uh, place in the Git plugin, then I don't think it makes sense. So um, so I think we've we've had a logical discussion about what we can do and uh, and what's the first thing we should do because if we are promising a new uh, a new feature which improves performance in certain cases, at least it should do that first. And uh, then if we have time, then um, I can look into, uh, we can discuss and if we have the time, we can uh, look into more challenges we could solve. Yes. So uh, my, my only issue was that, have I done enough for performance improvement within the Git plugin? So that's, that's what I was trying to explore. And so, uh, uh, and uh, I think that was why I, I'm asking these questions. Yes. Great. So yeah. let's proceed forward then. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I think I think we've got lots and lots of work yet remaining. I'm a little mm. worried that we may not get to release by end of end of the time period even. So so there's there are so many things, so many parts and pieces that justify a release. We 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 will certainly need to release Git client. We'll need to release Git plugin. We probably need to release GitHub branch source and Bitbucket branch source and Giddy and GitLab and, and I, yes, I understand your concern, Mark. And 
and I think we should move forward in full steam, uh, developing them first and consolidating their releases. Yes, that's that's a, that's a great plan. All right, thank you. I'll post the I'll post the recording. <laughs>